I was talking to Nick Enright, um, and he, we were talking, we'd done a lot of stuff together, and he was saying to me that he'd heard about these clubs all around the country, and I went, oh, yeah, 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 we had the same thing here, the boathouse or the boat shed, and he said, oh, well, let's talk about that, and we started to talk over dinners and stuff like that, and um, uh, we then had a chat to Robin Nevin, who was the artistic director at the time at, at the Queensland Theatre Company, and going, oh, there's this kind of idea, and for me, there's a sense of the nostalgia of these amazing dance clubs where white and black would dance together. You, you have to remember, you know, in the 19, let's call them 1950s, that people had fought side by side during the war and had come home and had realised that the world was still a very racist place for Indigenous Australians, but they had fought side by side. And so a lot of our white allies said, OK, well, let's, let's do something about that and keep the social engagement together. So these dance clubs are all over the country at the time. And for me, I just kind of went, when we were talking at the time in the late 90s, all about reconciliation and going, actually, we have to reconcile as a nation. We have to come together. And dancing was the, the best metaphor ever. I was 28 at the time. Being given a big commission with a, a, a wonderful company like this was extraordinary. It was almost unheard of. And this, giving this commission and having this trust and faith and then creating this show as part of it that then just went off. It was extraordinary. Opening night was in Cairns. So extraordinary. Like, so, so we opened in Cairns and went to Mackay and Townsville before it came to, to QPAC. And this wonderful thing about opening in Cairns with a lot of my Aboriginal family that are from Cairns as well, and this sense of excitement that, you know, a big musical had come to town that was about you know, people coming together it was amazing. And then when sitting in, oh, I was incredibly nervous. I must say, as a younger artist, I felt a lot of nerves. I kind of would, sometimes I couldn't even watch things. I got really kind of upset with myself if little things didn't go right and all that kind of stuff. You know, 20 years on, I'm much more chill about it. <laughs> That's why it's great to come back to a work like this because there's a younger artist in this work. There's this young, idealistic, thoughtful artist who wanted to change the world and now in my 50s I look back and I go actually I want a little bit more of that idealism I want a little bit more that where uh, where characters get to sing because they can't hold in their emotions anymore you know they're not cynical they're they're joyful and uh, exuberant I love that and so sitting in the audience for that opening night at QPAC was both nerve-wracking but also a real balm for your soul when you hear people laugh at the same time, break into applause, and the sense of where they get this moment. And at the end of the show too, there's this moment where the pin drops and everyone goes, oh, that's what it's about. And you feel this kind of sense of excitement that I've communicated with a group of people night after night after night. It's interesting to think back in the 90s, it was all about reconciliation. It was all about how do we work together? In 2022, the conversation that we're talking about now is about sovereignty and treaty and about truth telling, about saying to the society, here are stories that we have to hold true and whether they're, they're comfortable or not. And so to tell this story in that context, to say, here's a historical perspective of what it was like to live in Brisbane or anywhere else in Australia really, but in Brisbane at that time. And there was good and bad, and we have to acknowledge that that's our truth. That's our shared truth. And only when we can actually have tr truth telling, when we can understand each other, can we move forward together into understandings of sovereignty or treaty. So for me, I think the, the coming back to this story is a real invitation, not, not to revisit nostalgia, but to revisit our roots as a community and say, we are these people. We are the descendants of these people that learnt to dance together. What's our future? Back in the 90s, it was the first time for a lot of us to do these big things. Um, when you think about Bangara, Stephen Page was the, the uh, choreographer on the show. And, and like he'd only been just working in Bangara for five or six years. He, he came to choreograph this show. Um, his brother, David Page, who sadly is no longer with us, played the lead role. And that was one of his first big shows on stage. It's hard to think. You know, these people who've had these amazing careers, they started in this show. Wayne Blair, who has gone on to be this kind of award-winning filmmaker and, and um, 
and performer, played this amazing role in this show as one of his first big times on the State Theatre Company stage. Uh, Ursula Jovich, who has won multiple Helpman Awards, but also in the, um, the, the chorus, we had Elaine Crombie, who's gone on to have an amazing career. This was one of her first professional roles. And I just love this idea that um, as an Indigenous maker, as an Indigenous man, this idea of giving opportunities to people and kind of building up careers and saying, actually, climb the ladder with us, come on up, keep opening doors. And so this option for us now is to go, how do we keep that spirit in a remount? 